Today we're talking about the Middle Ages. After the fall of the Roman Empire, there were two styles that were dominant during this time period. First was the Romanesque style, which then led into the Gothic style. There are very defined differences as the technology and understanding of building became more prevalent. The Romanesque style was from mid 11th century through the end of the 12th century. This style was based on the wealth of the churches and monasteries. Monasteries were usually very wealthy and had great power. The style is called Romanesque because it is a little like Roman architecture. Between the time of Charlemagne, which was 800 AD, and the beginning of the Romanesque period, which was 200 years later, people had not built many new buildings. Everyone was too poor and there were many wars going on. It wasn't until around 1000 AD that the kings and queens started ordering important stone buildings to be built. Mostly castles and churches are built in the Romanesque style. You can see Romanesque buildings all over France, England, Italy, Germany, and northern Spain. Romanesque buildings were made of stone, but often had wood roofs because the technology to create stone roofs had not yet been established. Walls were very thick and windows were very small and narrow, as they had not yet figured out how to support larger openings for glass. Romanesque buildings were often seen as very heavy and dark inside. They had round semicircular arches like Roman buildings and decorated column capitals, but Romanesque capitals often had carvings of people, animals, or mythological creatures on them instead of plants. Each building has clearly defined forms and they are frequently of very regular symmetrical plans so that the overall appearance is one of simplicity when compared with the Gothic buildings that soon followed. The medieval arch was affected by feudalism, which was a social hierarchy based on agricultural society. For safety and defense, people in the Middle Ages formed small communities around a central lord or master. Most people lived on a manor, which consisted of the castle, church, the village, and the surrounding farmland. These manors were isolated, with occasional visits from peddlers, pilgrims, or soldiers from other fiefdoms. In the feudal system, the king awarded land grants, or fiefs, to his most important nobles, his barons, and bishops in return for their contribution of soldiers for the king's armies. The lowest people were the peasants, serfs, or also called villains. In exchange for living and working on his land, the lord offered his peasants protection. The need for protection was an enormous factor early in the Middle Ages, but later there were more peaceful times, so fighting became minimal. Looking at the Gothic style, it was from the 12th century through the 15th century, and this style was important for cathedral building and also secular architecture, including colleges, castles, town halls, and domestic architecture. It actually evolved from the Romanesque style. Features identifiable from the Gothic period are the pointed arches, ribbed vault ceilings, and flying buttresses. Gothic also emphasizes that they are trying to reach for God. All Gothic architecture becomes very tall and pointy, which emphasizes that point. In this slide, you can see examples of the pointed Gothic arch, the flying buttresses which support the Gothic arch, and the rib vault ceiling which also emphasizes pointiness and the illusion of reaching higher. Spatial relationships changed throughout the period as the need for defense became less and less. Two types of spatial plans developed during the medieval period. The first type was based on a walled enclosure and was often a castle. There were also one or more moats, which are a large ditch or river dug around the enclosure, 
and often it was built up on a hill. The enclosure was a residential unit and consisted of a concentric arrangement with walled enclosures in the center. Castles often served as a military stronghold for the feudal lord. The second type was a central court for more communal living and private spaces. These spaces were surrounded by a moat and walled enclosures also. In this slide, you can see an example of a Mott and Bailey castle, which is just another example of the type of structure used for protection. During this time period, more specialized rooms were developed to meet certain functions. By doing this, primary public spaces had more privacy. The primary spaces during the medieval period included the kitchen, great chamber, lodgings, and hall. An important room in the Middle Ages was the hall. The hall was usually on the ground floor and had a raised platform for the lord of the manor to oversee. His family and guests were seated on either side of him. This raised platform is called a dais. The ceiling often consisted of wooden trusses, which are rigid framing in a triangular arrangement and was very important in the interior space during medieval times. The most private space was the closet. The Lord used this area for meditation and business matters. The closet was sometimes built in the chapel where the Lord could oversee the mass while remaining in his most private space. The hall was a general gathering space for the large amounts of people. This is the area where many slept as there were not really private bedrooms. The hall was used for sleeping, eating, dancing, and having parties. As the period progressed, the purposes of space within the house changed and led to more specialized rooms and a greater need for privacy along with more attention to domestic comfort. The varying rooms were usually arranged from most public to most private. Interior walls were made by using wood and plaster. The walls were decorated by the use of carving or painting. Wooden walls were usually decorated with wainscot painting, paneling. Whitewash was used for plaster walls. Simulating masonry with paint was common. Painted friezes and murals were common too. Tapestries and textiles were often seen because they were easily transported. Floors were mainly made out of flagstone, brick, tile, wood, or plaster. Carpet was not used at all. All, class, all classes did use woven rush matting. Upper floors were made by using large wooden planks, usually oak. The size and shapes of windows and doors differed. Early in the period, small windows were preferred for better defense. Large windows became popular later as the wealth increased and there was less fighting. Larger windows allowed more light in the interiors. Both square and pointed head windows were used. Glass was not available in the beginning of this period. Instead, coverings for the windows were shaved horn, wax paper, or, or oiled linen. These would be held in place with a wooden lattice. Doors were both simple and ornate depending on status. Carving was very popular to decorate the outside. Many doors were arched with a rectangular mold around it. The most common type of ceiling in medieval times was that in the hall, which was two stories tall, usually with open beams supporting a pitched roof. Carvings could be seen in the ceiling for decoration, and beams were exposed in flat ceilings as well. Stairways were either circular or straight. Circular stairs were the most used in defensive purposes. They would be made out of stone, wood, or brick. Furniture was used for both utility and to denote hierarchical positions. Most of the furniture was transportable because many families were nomadic or moved from place to place. Things such as dining rooms, tables, beds, and built-ins were made out of heavier wood because they would be left behind when the family moved. The main material used in furniture making is wood, 
decorated with carvings, paintings, and textiles. Seating was used to express authority, rank, and power. The most important person in the household sat in the chair or seat while lower status people sat on stools or benches. The chair was rectangular with a tall back and storage beneath the seat. Stools sat in the hallways of households and held many purposes. They were seats, storage, and often used as tables. A bench was made as just a longer version of the stool. Dining tables were constructed of two parts so the servants could easily take them apart and set them aside. There was a top, which is known as a board, and the base, which is known as the frame. During early medieval times, bed had posts on either corner, sometimes extending 15 feet taller than the mattress. Canopies were used and draperies hung from them to keep the warmth inside the bed chamber. Later in this period, beds were so valuable, people often left them in wills to other family members. Buffets and credenzas were used as storage and to display silver for food storage or sometimes used as a table. Chests were versatile and sometimes were used as seats tables or receptacles for church vestibules and occasionally even a bed. The ornament of this time consisted of tracery, crockets, checkered carvings, stylized flowers, maple leaves, curled cabbage, grapes with vine leaves, and heraldic motifs were all used in architecture for ornament. That concludes our lesson on the Middle Ages. The next time we're going to be talking about the Renaissance.